Hello students, so welcome back. Today we will be talking about uh, our images, that is the other lecture on the images. So what we are going to cover in this lecture is uh, we will review what we have done in the last lecture. Then we will talk about the visible spectrum. The spectrum is more like the lights that we can see from our eyes. Then we talk about the spectral power density. Then we have uh, trisstimulus theory, how we can model different uh, colors in our digital world. And then we talk about different models, which are based on this trisstimulus theory, uh, red, green, and blue, or kind, magenta, yellow, and key, or X, Y, Z. So we talk about those models. And then we have uh, talk about the consistent colors and then we talk about the channels in this uh, lecture so first thing is review so uh, as you can see that uh, these are the learning outcomes that we are going to cover describing this what is a visual uh, visible spectrum what is we will be able to answer that what is a power spectral density what and um, we will be able to explain the stimulus theory and then we can compare the RGB and the CMYK or the XYZ color models and explain what are the challenges to producing the consistent colors and what are different colors which are present in normally in our color images. So review first. So last time we start talk about the uh, scalable vector graphics and we see that we have different uh, different types of uh, what you can say that uh, 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 basic shapes that we can use in our vector graphics to produce different type of vector graphics. We have lines, rectangles, circles, ellipse, polygons, polylines, paths, and text. So we have discussed last time that this one. This is an example of our uh, sport uh, scalable vector graphics. Are sport not sport vector graphics? And these are the two different. Uh, what you can say. This is a Inkscape is a uh, open source uh, software which can help you to produce or to create those uh, um, scalable vector graphics. So now the first thing that we will be talking about the visual spectrum or visible spectrum. What the human eye can see. So for this we need to understand what is a human eye. It is itself. So right here we have a lens from which the light is going or go through into our eye and inside our eye on the back of our eye we have some sensory uh, sensors you can say that the natural sensors which uh, are present in our human body so there are two different type of sensors one are called the roads and the other one called the cones and when we talk about the cones we have three types of cones one is the blue which is which can recognize which can sense which can help us to see the short wave light uh, light rays short wave okay short wavelength they have the short wavelength so short wave they are more kind of a blue color you can say that and then in the middle we have a green one that is again which will help us to see the wave uh, light waves with the medium uh, wavelength and then the last one which is the red cone which will help us to see the long wavelength it's more like a red color so we have a blue color which has the short wavelength green color which has the uh, middle or the average wavelength and the red which is a long wavelength so these three different type of rods help us to see three different ranges of the colors don't say that blue green and red but they, we can say that they allow us to see three different ranges of the light colors color lights okay and the second sensors type is the roads and roads are for the night vision and they can pick up the light intensity i mean the, the light is more or light is less and uh, so based on that they will decide so road will help us to see the intensity or sense the intensity of the color or intensity of the light okay so this is the 
uh, what you can say that sensory system within our image within our eye that help us to see something right in front of us so if we look at the spectrum if i mean this wavelength what is a wavelength wavelength is more like uh, what you can say that i mean if we start from here so what is the wave length of that particular specific wave so if you look at that here we have small lengths and then it is increasing 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 and then you can see that it is going into the in in terms of the radio waves it can go up to the 100 kilometer wavelength one wave which is one kilometer or a 10 kilometer long so you can say that the wavelength is becoming very huge 10 kilometer or 100 kilometer so we have different types of wavelengths uh, for our lights so starting from the nanometers which is a very very small amount in a very small amount of space we have a complete wave and here we have on the other end of the this wavelength we have the 100 kilometer so that is more radio waves so if we look at our visible spectrum i mean we have a huge range of the wavelengths of the light but the only we can see the approximately 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer this is the spectrum that is visible and that is our visible spectrum that we can see we cannot see the radio waves we cannot see the microwaves you have the microwave in your homes and then they are using those microwaves to cook your food or to reheat your food but we can't see them the same thing is talking about the x-rays or so the gamma rays x-rays we are going I mean, unfortunately if you have some injury then you need to go under some x-ray and then you can see that your bones are intact or not or if you have some problems or that so you we are using those x-rays but we can't see them so they are not visible to us for our normal eyes so we have a very limited range of um, wavelengths of the light that we can see from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer and when these wavelength the uh, the light between these two wavelengths enter into our eyes we uh, our eyes we can see them we can sense them and we can see that what's happening in front of us <clears throat> again if you look at that we have a um, this graph show us the wavelength and um, 400 nanometers to 750 nanometers i mean uh, you you can see that the intensity is going up and down for the red which is having uh, and then we have for the blue for the green so you can see that green is more like kind of smooth red is going up and down uh, blue is uh, belongs to the what you can say that the low low um, uh, wavelength or the shorter wavelengths so it is on the hair on the uh, shorter wavelength part the green is more like average so we can see the things here so you can see the standard observer we can see what's happening over there the red light we can only see in this particular specific part which is here we we can't it intermix with the blue but it's not that much visible so white light is actually a combination of all the wavelengths I mean, the wavelength that we are talking about 400 nanometer to the 700 nanometer white light is actually a combination of all of them so they are combined together we with our naked eye we can't differentiate we can't see the differences between the colors but if that light is passing through a specific material that is called prism or the mirror then we can see and the same effect is happening uh, on the um, rainbows so what's happened so when the sunlight is passing through the droplets or the in inside the air uh, water vapors inside the air then they actually separate those lights into um, uh, different colors and then we can see that uh, rainbow so the same effect of the prism effect is actually going on when we see a rainbow so again uh, electromagnetic uh, spectrum they are telling you that what is that 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer which is the visible one before that we have ultraviolet after that we have infrared and then we also have the other forms of 
if we are talking about the smaller one we have cosmetic arrays gamma rays x-rays ultraviolet which are which have the smaller wavelength and then we have the higher wavelength which are more kind of radio wave or the broad broadcast bands or the radar or the microwaves or infrared but we can't see them so we have a very limited amount of uh, wavelength that we can see or from our eye we also have a uh, different perception of the colors like we can say that if we are using a black and white it's more like a balanced color peaceful green trustworthy blue uh, magenta or what you can say purple is more creative if we're talking about red or more bold colors excitement if we're talking about the orange color it's more like friendly and if we're talking about the more yellowish color it's more like optimism and some people like google ebay and they are using the multiple colors to show all different type of so these are the different studies which these researchers has done and then see that these colors actually belongs to different type of categories and they categorize them and so this is like perception of the colors if you are want to use uh, some uh, colors or choose a color uh, palette for your website or for your mobile application then we try to consider these different type of color emotions which are in color emotion guide so if we want to use uh, something um, develop an application for the kids then you will be more that you use some excitement colors so it excited them uh, and which is more uh, uh, property of the kids and they are more excited when they see something new and so on so that's kind of color emotion guide we can use when we are choosing the color scheme for our website or application or the software or the mobile application and so on so now we will talk about color spectral density so it's a spectral power density spd is a description of how the intensity of the light varies with the wavelength we have the wavelength from 400 to 700 and then what will be the intensity is varying so if you look at that the intensity uh, for the smaller uh, what you can say that for the small wavelength the blue has the higher higher intensity and for the middle wavelength we, the green has the high intensity and then we have the yellow or the orange or the red and so on so we have different colors and then accordingly we have different type of so each and every color has different intensity for different wavelength so that's why we can say that blue is more kind of a small wavelength green is average wavelength and the red is the high wavelength and then of course in between we have the yellow we have the uh, orange we have other colors as well okay and then uh, the combination of these wavelengths can be used to create an spd i mean we need to combine them together the in theory the spd or the uh, what you can say that the spectral power density spectral power density should be continuous it is a continuous phenomenon because we're talking about the light waves and light waves are the continuous it means if we're talking about uh, remember that we have said that when we want sampling of our sound we need to take some samples at every time because sound is a continuous phenomena or continuous wave and it represent it has the infinite values when they have the infinite values then we cannot represent them inside our computer system or the digital world so we need to sample them the same principle we are going to apply here that instead of because the light waves are the continuous wave and they contain the infinite informations we cannot encode them into our digital world so we need to do sampling so here they are saying that in every 10 nanometer for the 10 nanometer the difference between the one nanometer and the 10 nanometer so which when the wavelength we are taking only the 31 different components so we are taking 31 samples from that 10 nanometer range and then we are representing them so again this is an approximation this is a sampling that we have done or over that continuous spectrum and then we are trying to represent so it is an approximation for the actual information so so we are only taking 31 samples or the components okay uh, 
okay so uh, this is sampling we can do uh, the SPD is a good model for the color I mean we can use the uh, spectral power density as a color model for our digital world but now you can see that we need 31 information 31 different type of information to represent that particular specific color inside our computer system so 31 different information maybe for one information we need uh, three bytes so then we can say that 31 multiplied by th three so that will give us like a huge number of bytes are required a large number of like like we can say that 93 bytes are required to represent one piece of information okay so one color information at one specific time at one specific wavelength we need 30, 93 bytes i mean i'm just giving you an idea so that's an, and again this is an approximation this is not giving you the exact answer so it's not that uh, simple to represent that particular spectral power density uh, as a color model for our digital world on the other hand, uh, the Tristubulus theory, what it say that the fact that our perception of the color derives from our eye's response. I mean, if you go back to our eye, we have three different type of cones. One is the red, blue, and green based on the wavelength of the uh, light. So we have smaller, which is the blue, which you have the medium, which is green, and then we have the high, which is the red one. So based on that specific eye construction the sensors that we have in our eye the the testimulus comes with a theory this theory say that uh, suggest that any color can be satisfied specified by just three values three different huh? smaller wavelength medium wavelength or the high wavelength in within the range of the 400 to 700 nanometer so we can represent any light or any color uh, for using that particular specific wavelengths and we call these components the red blue and green the red green and blue so the red green and blue light are referred to as the additive primitive primary colors we are going to add all those components together to produce the actual color so that is why it's we call it an additive primary colors so let's talk about more about the rgb color or rgb model uh, based on the testimulus theory uh, rgb color model commonly used in the digital multimedia okay and then we we will what wavelength is true red blue and green so how we can see let's see how we can answer this thing uh, so the consequences consequently digital there is no universally accepted standard i mean if we talk about that what is a true red or blue or green there is no universally accepted standard. consequently digital ident uh, identical colors can vary depending on display hardware i mean digital digitally identical colors can be de vary depending on the display hardware what does that mean maybe you have different one is uh, what you can say that um, I will give you the example of the iPhone and the uh, Samsung, uh, Samsung mobiles and the iPhone mobiles. S iPhone say the white is a pure white. They are based on that particular specific theory and then whole that screen is based on that particular specific thing. White is pure white, but gray, black can be maybe a little bit smaller than or maybe a little bit gray, no problem at all. On the other hand, the uh, Samsung is say that black is black, pure black is black, and then maybe white, a little bit of white, that's fine. So they are having two different uh, theory when they are designing their screens, okay? So based on that, maybe if you are choosing, seeing the same image on the iPhone and you are, use, see, you are seeing the same image, I mean, you have just transferred to you, the, your image to some friend and you have the same images which are identical to each other but when you're looking at two different mobile devices they will be look a bit different not it's too much different but the color be a, a slightly different from each other so based on the hardware based on the lcd or maze uh, now we have plasma tvs or the else the 
other uh, different type of TVs, if they're screens. So based on that hardware, the color can be different. So we can't say that if we are talking about one particular specific image, then how it will look like. It may be a slightly different from on different hardwares. We will be talking more about when we talk about the consistent uh, color consistent consistency. Okay. So <sighs> color gamut. Color gamut is uh, represent the total range of colors we can perceive. So again, we're talking about uh, the range of the five, uh, 400, uh, 400 to 700. And then what are the different type of the color that we can see? So this will show you the complete color range. RGB colors. Huh? RGB color is actually covering a small part of that visible, uh, the red, green, blue model that we have based on the tr stimulus theory that we have developed. It is not covering the all visible spectrum of our, uh, only a part of that it can cover. Okay, so no matter how red and blue and green are defined, it is impossible to represent every possible colors of as a combination of these three components. D65 is the white point and the HD TV gamut. So this is an HD high definition television screen gamut is there. So you can see that we, we can't see the colors which is outside of that one on those screens. So that is a limitation of that particular specific red green blue uh, color model so red green blue colors are specified as three values they are represented by three different values so what you can say that it is often a six digit hexadecimal hexadecimal mean that we have two digits or one byte for red one byte or two digit hexadecimal digit for the green one byte or two hexadecimal digit for the blue so we are representing them into three different bytes one byte for the red one byte for the green one byte for the blue and we also have so it will be like um, i mean if i just try to write a color here maybe i can pen and then for example if i say that 20 one six b and f so it is representing a specific color in the red blue and green okay so this first part belongs to the red so it is actually representing a red one hexadecimal digit is representing four bits the second again representing the four bits so two hexadecimal uh, digits is actually representing the eight different bits it means they are talking about they are representing one byte so one byte for the red one byte for the green and the one byte for the blue color so they are representing three uh, one color information for one particular pixel is represented by three different bytes okay so uh, is, is often written in six and consequently rgb um, red green and blue values range from 0, 0 to ff 0, 0 to ff mean that we can have uh, all 0 huh? all 0 0 all 8 bits are 0 or all 8 bits are 1 huh? so that is ranging from 0 to 255 in the decimal number because one byte we can represent 256 numbers so if we starting with 0 that will go up to 255 so we can in one particular byte we can represent a number between 0 and 255 okay so the equal values of each color one for example if we have r g and b in all those values are same maybe two 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 six twos okay the first two are representing the red color the second two are representing the green color and the third two are representing the blue color if the red blue and green values are equal they are actually generating a grayscale value if they are all zero then it will be a black if they are all at, uh, 256 255 or all fff then it will produce a white color or if it is in between then and then it will 
uh, uh, create a gray color but maybe a different intensity if it is more towards white it will be a more light gray if it is more towards zero then it will be more uh, dark gray color okay so all other colors are representing so this is how if the uh, red green and blue colors values are equal then they are actually producing the black white or the gray color depending on what the value is if it is all zeros then it is black if it is all f or 255 255 255 then it is white if it is in between that then it will create a gray uh, depending on what that value is it is more close to black or it more close to the white and all other colors are actually the combination of the red blue and green with different values the additive color model of the light is different from the mixing pigments i mean the additive color model of the red blue and green is different from the normal one when we have different type of uh, like oil painting or the paints and pigments and when combining them together and reducing something no they are different from that actual uh, physical models of the combining those different type of pigments so for example they say that the mixing uh, equal parts of red blue and green paints will result in a dark brown or black color okay equal parts it doesn't matter that what the value is if they are producing they are combining uh, the same amount of the red blue and green colors together they will give you the dark or the brown color not the gray colors okay so or even the white you can't have that white one the reason is that they are physical things so that additive model of the red blue green for the digital world is different from that mixing the colors or the mixing the oil paints or something like that okay the same thing i mean we have represented our uh, rgb color model uh, using a 3d cube uh, we have the one axis representing the red color the other axis is representing the green color the third axis is representing the blue color if we come to uh, at this particular specific point you can say that this is our white color all wise at all values are 255 that right at this particular specific corner huh? this corner so this is our 255 255 255 so that is our uh, white color if we talk about that origin of this 3d scale that will be 0, 0, 0 value and that will be representing the black color okay fine so we do not perceive colors as a combination of so much red plus a little bit blue i mean that is our i mean we cannot we have too much red and a little bit blue we cannot perceive we cannot uh, see that color rgb is therefore not user friendly so uh, red blue and green are not that user friendly so that's why they are trying to come up with a separate uh, a different model uh, hue saturation and lightness or the hue saturation and blue uh, or value as a description of the color that can be related to pick a color i mean again we are talking about the red blue and green uh, what is the red how much red how much blue how much green we're talking about picking a color that's the first part it is exactly the same as our rgb model but we also have what is the saturation and what is the brightness of that one so we will uh, talk about these more you is ima ima imagine the combination of the rgb values to be placed in a color wheel hmm? we are talking about this color wheel this is a color wheel and then we say that we are selecting how much blue how much green how much red so we are getting all those colors that's the, exactly the same as the red green and blue model but and then again in eight bits the number of degrees might be scaled up from to 0 to 240 or 0 to 255 rather than 3 0 to 360 degree i mean we're talking about the circle and we know that in this circle we have 360 degrees so right now we are talking about we can only show the the hue number is a number of degree around the wheel hue number is an 8 bit number okay the color is there i mean which color we are talking about okay and then what um, now in the 8 bit color we can only represent a 255 0 to 255 numbers so we don't have 360 degrees so what we need to do we need to scale them down inside our 200 0 to 255 values so we have a scaling we have mathematical formula which help us to scale it down that if something is 260 degree 
So what will happen? What it will be converted using a specific formula into our 255 value. The saturation number is a, how pure is that color? I mean, if that color is more more black or more white. So we are moving from this direction, from our center to the edge of our color uh, edge of our circle. So that is our saturation. The I mean. The, the color is more dark or more light you can say that and then we also have the uh, lightness number is how much the white uh, white is added so again we have the rgb color we are picking up color then we are saying that what is that particular hue value based on that particular specific circle what is the saturation i mean we are at the center or we are moving out what place we are we are here or we are here or we are here or we are here so based on that we are looking at the saturation of that particular specific color and then the third thing is the lightness i mean how i mean white is added from the black to white so these are the three different ways uh, hue saturation and lightness so we have three different values again it's more RGB values and then we also have the um, uh, HSV uh, or the value or the uh, brightness hue 0 is red I mean hue 0 is red and hue uh, 255 uh, is more like uh, saturation 0 is no color hmm? white saturation 0 it means there is no color at all when there is no color it means it's a white one and then if we talk about uh, 50 percent is more like 255 128 128 it's saturation and uh, uh, saturation is you know, 50 percent so red is 255 green is 128 and blue is 128 so again we are like somewhere in the middle of that particular specific spectrum the value zero is no brightness it means that it's talking about a black color zero saturation white color if we talk about the zero brightness it means we're talking about the black color okay and then similarly if we want to a half a brightness it means we are increasing only the red and it will be somewhere here in the middle of that particular specific spectrum so this is the hue saturation and values zero is the red hue is an arbitrary but standard encoding okay that we have discussed Again, if we want to generate the uh, gray values using this uh, gray scale in the RGB has equal values of the RGB and hence 127, 127 is a 50% gray. Uh, what is a gray in the HSL or the HSY? So we will, we need to see that. So this is our the HSL hue, saturation and the lightness. So if we talk about, so we have if we talk, if we are moving around the circle that is a degree and where in that circle we are we are talking about a hue value and if we are moving from the center towards the circumference of that uh, specific circle then we are talking about the saturation how much color they have they have less color or the high color and if we are moving from dark to the light so that is the lightness on the other hand if we talk about the HSV that is the hue saturation and value then it is more like uh, the uh, what you can say that again hue is the same saturation is the same but this the third degree scale is value not the lightness lightness zero mean black color lightness full mean it's a white color it does not matter what is the hue and what is the saturation it will become a white on the other hand the value value will show you a different intensity of the color instead of the lightness so that's a you can see a difference between the hue saturation and lightness model and hue saturation and the value model in the maximum value you can still see the color but will be more vibrant they will be more light on the other hand if you go value zero that will become black but here you can't see any white here you can see the white so you can imagine this is our uh, apple model of the colors uh, apple and this is our samsung model they say that black is black 
and then we talk about the colors okay and the apple say that white is white so if all the light lightness is full then it is you can say that this is our white and then we will talk about the other colors so this i mean you can imagine that these are the two different separate models for representing the colors so uh, for the hue saturation and li lightness maximum lightness gives light white color maximum lightness if you look at that maximum lightness if we're talking about right on the top of that particular uh, circle or from down to up it is highest light or the 255 to 55 value it means it's a white color the maximum lightness gives black color no matter and uh, minimum lightness minimum max not maximum minimum li maximum lightness give you the white color minimum lightness will give you the black color on the other hand in the hsv maximum value give you the brightest color not give you the white color it will give you the brightest color and on the other hand the minimum value is exactly the same as hsl it will give you back the black black color again uh, if you want to uh, represent that particular specific hue saturation light or hue saturation value then in that particular square you can only have two values you can have the hue value or the saturation and if you want to have that value or the um, uh, lightness then you have a third scale another scale up and down we can move up and down to in increase the lightness or the de decrease the lightness if it's coming down it means zero if it's going up it's 240 so we have that particular specific way to uh, show the colors inside our digital world and we can select different values for the hue for saturation and for the lightness of the value so choices of the hsl versus the hsv seems to be application dependent again depending on the application we need to see that how we can choose between that i mean whether we are choosing the hue uh, saturation and the lightness or the hue saturation and the value but they are representing they are intuitive way of representing the rgb values i mean rgb values are still there but in a different way uh, HSL and HSV are an easier way to show the colors and the flat D and the hue and saturation we can show the in the flat D and then we have another extra slider for the lightness or the value as you have you can see in this particular this is where we can select the saturation and the hue and here in this particular specific slider we can select this lightness or the value the second uh, Color model is the we will talk about this question later on so we have the CMYK um, that is kind magenta yellow and the key stands for the uh, kind magenta yellow and the key uh, mixtures containing different properties of the kind okay and then uh, light in the corresponding pro proportions thus the producing the same range of the colors as the rgb light so you are talking about i mean if we talk about the rgb color model or the we talk about the cmyk color model they are more or less producing the same with slight differences of course but they are producing the same range of colors that are being produced uh kind magenta and yellow are subtractive primaries on the other hand the rgb are the additive primaries they are adding together now they are we are subtracting them together subtracting so these are the this is the one main difference between the uh, rgb color model and the cmyk color model uh, rgb is additive on the other hand the cmyk is subtractive primaries the same color space is used for the professional printing mostly the professional printing is being done in that particular specific cmyk model okay Uh, so you can see the difference if this yellow line is representing the rgb gamut the this is the visible colors uh, visible colors and then we rgb is representing that particular portion on the other hand the cmyk gamut is representing this particular portion so you can see the differences but still it's more or less covering mostly the same uh, color 
colors that uh, in the visible spectrum. Then we also have another uh, color model that is XYZ. XYZ is more advanced color space used for color by color scientists called XYZ. XY color space is capable of representing all possible colors of our visible spectrum. All possible colors encompass all other color spaces and it can it cover all the like it it, it cover the RGB, it cover the CMYK, it color all, cover all those different models but uh, it's more complex okay and uh, if you want to see you can go to that particular specific link and then you can see uh, the complete details of that one that particular specific model so here I will just give you a brief information and then if you want to see more details then you can go over there in that particular specific YouTube video and see that so although the XYZ color space can describe all possible colors, it is worth noting that no monitor, I mean, there is, does not exist any monitor or the TV or the projector which is capable of displaying those colors. So whether it is XYZ, which is a theoretical model of the color, which can represent all possible colors, but the point is there does not exist any monitor, any hardware which can show those colors so it can be used in the mathematical forms it can be used in the research but it cannot be used in the real life so that's why it is like worth nothing so no printer or the paint combination is capable of producing all of those colors so that's why it is theoretical it is available on the available we can use them in the research but we cannot use them in the real life so you can see the differences here so we have the cathode ray tube so which can only I mean we will see if we try to represent using the XYZ it is not going to be represented here the same thing here for the LCD or the GL pr pr uh, projector with the laser light sources and so on so you can see all those things that we they are not capable of showing all those colors fine uh, cathode ray tube TVs they can only cover 55% LCD TV has improved the coverage to 92% but even the latest one technology is only covering the 97% of the visible spectrum now we talk about the consistent colors so what do you mean by consistent colors so consider an image stored or created on one particular device for example your computer and the image will have its own original color space different hardware they have their own uh, color space mechanism and if you have created that particular specific image then it is create according to that particular specific color space if this image is taken if you take that particular specific image to another device or and try to print it the color of in the image will not be reproduced accurately so that becomes an inconsistent for example we have that particular specific image we are saved an image in the source RGB and then we are trying to display in the other video other device then the colors will be a slightly different not exactly the same so that is inconsistent colors the inconsistency between two different devices because they have different color space they have using different technology to display those things so that will become inconsistency so for that we have a specific way uh, if a color profile color profile color profile of that particular specific hardware device that model the input device is embedded inside the image file it can be combined with the profile that models the output device and translates or tr to translate between the color spaces and they reproduce the color accurately so what we are trying we are not only uh, saving the color information but we are also adding the color profile of that particular specific device on which that image has been produced okay and based on that two information we have the color information we have the profile information of that hardware device where it is created and then we are passing those two information to the other side or to the new hardware and then it will look at all those information and try to translate those color schemes and the profiles into the profile of its own uh, new device and then it can try to produce the more consistent colors so colors that are out of gamut should be reproduced to become make them consistent so here is the the complete model we have a source information and we also have a source device profile 
and they are embedded together in one particular specific file we have the color information we have the source device profile and then we have a translator which is transforming that color information based on that particular specific um, source device profile and produce the output on the other hardware or other monitor or the screen so you can see that they are more consistent colors they are more closer to each other the visible differences are not that there minor differences will be there of course but the visibly if you look at one with both of images they will, you will see that they are more or less same so standard rgb is the intended as a standard device independent color space for the monitors so standard rgb so i mean we are trying to make the color information independent of our devices so if that information are independent of device then any device can represent the consistent images when we are moving the uh, files or images from one place to the other it is often considered the default color space if none other is specified if we are not specifying the other device profile inside the image then it will be considered as a standard one so normally this is what we are using in our uh, images for example uh, we are having that a source image and then we are transform that into a the standard rgb when it is a standard rgb we can display it to the other device without any translation and with a standard rgb if that particular specific device is supporting the standard rgb it is there is no need of translation so it will represent a consistent image but maybe there is another what you can say that there is another device which is not supporting the standard rgb model so what it will do then it will take the standard rgb and it will combine the device profile with the information and produce the output and in this way we have the consistent information or the consistent color across different hardware devices so uh, the next thing is channel we say that rgb red green and blue red green and blue red green and blue so if we talk about in each and every uh, image we can produce those colors red channel green channel and the blue channel so what does it mean so we have the rgb values like this we have ff 22 cc that's one pixel so what we are what what we are trying to do here uh, the three arrays of the values can be treated as the grayscale images called channels okay what do you mean by grayscale images remember that if we say that if we have the equal values in the r g and b then it will produce a grayscale value it will produce a grayscale gray color so if what we are saying we are taking all the pixel values that is on the rgb we take all the red values and for the green and blue values we are putting those red value there it means red 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 so because now the red green and blue values become equal so that become a gray scale channel gray color or gray image gray scale image not the colored one even we are talking about it's a red channel but it's actually representing a gray scale so this is what happening here here in this original color we have the red blue and green different values we have all those different colors which are visible on this particular specific one this is the red one okay so what happened in all those pixels red value is there so we are repeating the same red value for the green and the blue one so at that in that case we only get a gray scale image but it's a red channel because it's contain the red information and then we have the green one in the green one again for the green one we will keep the original value and for the red and blue we replace the screen value with them and we get our gray uh, green channel but as a gray scale image and similarly we can do for the blue value which is here so red blue and green channel together and here red channel blue channel and green channel sorry green channel and the blue channel so you can see that they are the red red blue and green they have different channels but they are gray scales that's the same thing you can see it here fine um 
channel separation so making adjustment to the channels al uh, alters the colors of the image so when we are making the adjustment to channels it alters the colors of the images i mean of course if we are changing the values it will change the colors the balance color balance hue and saturation and color replacement adjustment change the color of the image as a whole so if we're making adjustment to the channels alters the color of the image the color balance hue saturation and the color replacement the adjustment change the color of an image as a whole okay so um, we can like we can uh, for example the steps of splitting an image into the red blue and green channels uh, using the gimp shop uh, there's a sub specific software open this uh, game shop gimp uh, select the colors components uh, we can select the color components decompose uh, and then we can say that decompose the layers when we say click ok it will decompose into the multiple uh, red blue and green channels uh, if the layer tab select one of the channels to show and hide the others to uh, export your image and you will get our red blue or green channels uh, then we have the white balancing i mean if we don't balance the white the what will happen the color will be more like this uh, most cameras can automatically guess the correct white balance uh, well when they uh, get, get it wrong the color is more like this on the left side and if we look at the right side this is the more uh, accurate color or the correct color balance because they have balanced that particular specific white inside our image so this is a review so we have described what is a visible spectrum what is a spectral power density uh, we also explain the uh, tri stimulus theory and based on that we have two different models we have rgb model cmyk model we have the rxyz models to represent the colors and then what are the challenge uh, challenges in producing the consistent colors and how we can separate different channels from our images so that is our lecture today thank you see you bye